my friends in this session we will study about the methods of studying variation or dispersion there are few important methods we will discuss on which uh, the first one is the range second one is the interquartile range and the quartile deviation third one is the mean deviation or average deviation fourth one is the standard deviation and the fifth is the lorange curve uh, the first two the range and the interquartile range and or the quartile deviation uh, are positional measures because they depend on the values at a particular position in the distribution uh, the other two you see the mean deviation or the average deviation and standard deviations are calculated as a calculation measures of deviation because all of the values are employed in their calculation and last one is graphic method we have seen the low range curve so we have these two if you see just a moment these two this position measure and these two are calculation measures and this one is uh, we have graphic method so we see there are two uh, type of measure we have to take in dispersion one is the absolute other one is the relative measure absolute measure is if you have only one distribution you have to calculate the dispersion then you may only require absolute measure if you have to compare two di different distributions and you have to compare the variability and the consistency of the distribution then you have to take the relative measure because the one distribution have uh, has a different units and the other has a another different unit just like uh, you see if we have a uh, production in a, a sugar factory it is in kg but uh, the procurement of raw material sugar cane is in tons metric tons so there is a different units if the units are different you cannot compare them so we take a relative measure because in relative measure there is no unit rather you see the Uh, formula of coefficient uh, coefficient is the unit place measure basically we use so coefficient means pure number that is independent of unit of measurement so here you see the coefficient of range is l, l minus a so over l plus a the units will eliminate to each other okay so here we see about the range so first i define the range it is defined as the difference between the value of the smallest item and the value of the largest item included in the distribution so it is a absolute measure if we have to take the range is equal to l minus a so where l is value of largest item uh, value of largest item and the s is value of the smallest item so this is the absolute measure range we could find in this uh, way by this formula and the second if we have to find the relative measure the coefficient of range the coefficient of range is equal to l minus s over l plus s l is the largest value of largest item s is the value of the smallest item we have to put here or we could get easily the coefficient of range so now we take one example uh, if we have the sale of uh, goods or the items in a showroom in a week we see on monday there is a sale of 200 items of a particular commodity tuesday there are 210 items wednesday there is 208 items sale 
Thursday there is a sale of 160 items Friday sale of 220 items and Saturday sale of 250 items so look at these in this data the sale is given and days is given here uh, so we have to find out the range because we know that the range if we take the absolute measure because there is only one data so if we have to find out the absolute measure then range is equal to L minus S here the largest value you see it is 250 and the smallest value is 160 so we will put here the largest value 250 minus 160 so we get here 90 is the range of this distribution now if you have to find out the coefficient of range relative measure if we have to take coefficient of range if we have to find out then it is equal to L minus S over L plus S we know that L is 250 S is 160 it is 250 plus 160 so we get here 90 over 410 so we get here 0 0.22 this is the coefficient of range we could get in this way now this is uh, it is was in uh, discrete data we have we could get in this way but in uh, group data or the continuous series we see what happens in continuous series We have a continuous series like this. Right here, the continuous series. Uh, calculate the coefficient range. Uh, we have to find out the coefficient of range and the range of this data. Uh, we have uh, the marks obtained by the students is given, and the number of students is also given. The frequency, and this is the x. This is called the class interval. Is given to us, and the frequency is given to us. So let us see how we could get the range. Yes. Now, I put down the details here. Uh, 10 to 20 marks obtained by the student. 10 to 20. Number of students are 8. Here you see 20 to 30. Then 30 to 40. Then 40 to 50. And finally 50 to 60 is given to us the marks obtained by them is 10 then 12 then 8 and finally 4 so this marks obtained by the students so now we have to find out the range so we have to take in the class interval the smallest class interval here you see it is 10 and the largest value is 60 so if we have to find out the range which is L minus S. This is our S, this is our L. 
so we have to put here 60 minus 10 so range of this data is 50 and the coefficient of range if we have to find out coefficient of range is equal to L minus S over L plus S. So we write here 60 minus 10 over 60 plus 10. So it is 50 over 70. We get here 0 0.714. So this is the coefficient of range of this continuous series. So this we have seen that uh, how we could get the measure of dispersion by a range method. By the method of range, uh, we could easily find the range. The coefficient is very simple to find it, uh, simple to understand and easy to compute. So now let us see. Uh, merits and limitations of range. So here you see the merits. In merits, we simplest to understand, easiest to compute. We have seen, we have uh, simplified the. Uh, questions regarding the range of the continuous and the discrete series as we have seen it's very easy to compute and simple to understand or it is very time saving also so these are the merits of this range and the limitations we see is not based on the each and every item of the distribution because we have seen that the, the smallest one and the largest one we are taking in our account of the observation so there is no involvement of other uh, elements or the items of the distribution and this so it is the basic limitation and the second limitation is cannot tell us anything about the character of the distribution within the two extreme observers the two extreme observation if we see in between them and within them uh, what type of uh, distributions in other items uh, uh, the spreadness of the other items uh, relating to each other we cannot um, it cannot tell us so and the third one is it cannot be computed in case of open end if you have the open end distribution like less than 10 and the more than 80 so we cannot compute this because we need the extreme and the lowest uh, values uh, of these in the continuous data uh, so these are the limitations of uh, range now we see where we could use in spite of these limitations where we could use this range so finally we use the range in the quality control uh, so how we use in the quality control range uh, the uh, the object of quality control is to keep a check on the quality of the product without 100 percent inspection because we don't take the 100 percent inspection we can it is not possible practically to us so when statistical methods of quality control are used the control charts are prepared and in preparing these charts range plays a very important role so the idea basically is that if the range the difference between the largest and the smallest mass produced items increase beyond a certain point the production machinery should be examined to find out why the items produced have not followed their user more consistent pattern so in this way we could uh, use this range in the quality control the second thing we see in the fluctuations in the share market, share prices, range is useful in studying the variations in the prices of stocks and shares and the other commodities and that are sensitive to price changes from one period to another. We know that the, for example, if we computing range, we can get an idea about the range of variations of say the gold prices. If the minimum price for uh, 10 gram gold in the year 2007 was 8 rupees or the dollar. Uh, we, we could use the rupees here, the rupees 8050 and the maximum price rupees 8950. So this is advanced tells us about the range of the variation 8950 minus 8050. So the range is 900 range is there in the 2007. Uh, now we use this uh, range method in the weather forecast. The meteorological department does make use of the range of determining say the difference between the minimum temperature and the maximum temperature the information is to great concern to the general public because they know as to within what limits the temperature is likely to vary on a particular day uh, now in the everyday life we use the range is most commonly used measure of dispersion in everyday life 
questions of form, of the form what is the minimum maximum temperature in a particular day what is the difference between the wages and by workers of a particular factory uh, how much one spends on petrol in his car or scooter in a month are all usually answered in the form of range so answer to questions such as these are usually given in the form of between such as such and such regardless of the uh, curiosity of the expression of the answer is still a range so in this way uh, the range is also useful in some extent so it was the session about the range in the next session we will study about some other uh, interquartile range quartile division thank you